Hey, it's the Fish Guy with Something Fishy bringing you the latest episode of Fish Guy TV. And today I'm with my favorite person, my twin brother, Don Harrington, who heads up our commercial service operation. And we're here today to talk about a really cool thing he has going on with breeding seahorses. Donnie, I see there's some seahorses behind us. I see seahorses that are very, very small, all the way up to decent sized uh, seahorses that we might see in our displays. So tell me what we have here, the littlest guys that I see. These guys are Hippocampus erectus, and they were born about 15 days ago. So they are, uh, we have them in a very small pseudochrysal, and they can, uh, where they can swim freely and, and, uh, and get the proper nutrition. Oh, so I get it. So there's no corners in this tank. So the seahorses can't get stuck in a corner, and the flow is very low, so that they don't get caught up. In uh, is that correct? Yeah, the flow the flow helps them uh, move around the tank. They can they can hold on to a hold fast, which is a hold fast is just our our, our piece of uh, a fern here, basically, or plant material, and uh, they can hold on there. But if they had let go of their hold fast, they can just rotate around the tank in a very free manner and not get stuck in any corner. Okay, so from the little guys that are only 15 days old, what's the next stage of seahorses that you have? Well, as they get a little bit bigger and they can maneuver a little bit better in a chrysal, which a chrysal is just a larger, a larger um, pseudo chrysal. So as the as the span gets larger here, it turns into more of a chrysal. Okay. So as these guys get a little bit bigger and they can adjust swim, have their better swim behaviors, we'll move them up to a larger a larger system. These larger seahorses can now sustain a bigger environment and that's why they're in a bigger tank? Yeah, these guys, uh, they've developed a little bit more so they, they have a little bit uh, easier time to swim around. So as they, get, as they get a little bit larger, in probably about 20, 25 days, we could actually move them to a larger aquarium. So how many seahorses are bred at, at one time? Is it considered, and what do you call that? Um, well, these, these seahorses are Hippocampus erectus and they can have anywhere between two and 300 uh, brood stock in a uh, in in actually one one gestation cycle. And how long is the gestation cycle? Is About it? 50 days. So it's not very long. No, because they are such a small animal, the brood stock, as as you see here, uh, they can get caught up very well in the filtration, and uh, we're absolutely trying to perfect it. But it does, they can get caught up. They uh, there there might be issues with the nutritional diets. They might not be eating the whole time. So we do lose a percentage of uh, seahorses over time. Okay, so broodstock here are 15 days old or so, and then we have these guys that are 50 days. What's considered an adult? Well, an adult seahorse would be reach maturity, uh, but their maturity would take anywhere between uh, six to seven months where they could actually get to uh, a, a medium range, which would be, which would be these guys would be sub-adult seahorses. And uh, as they mature a little bit, I would say another 30 to 40 days, they would start to reach sexual maturity. And then at that point, they could go into a home aquarium or on display? Yeah, or? you can see here that this is just a regular rectangular aquarium. And these guys can be displayed as long as the flows are, are proper. Uh, and uh, they have even flows and fed the right nutritional diets, they can go right into a, a home aquarium. So if I wanted to have a tank at home, give me a couple of tips of things that I'd have to do if I wanted to have seahorses. If you want to have seahorses, seahorses are very, uh, they don't like to be bugged. So you can't really have a lot of fishing with seahorses. So you really want to concentrate just on having seahorses, snails, crabs, things like that. And then also you have to have a really good nutritional diet from Artemia to, to live brine and uh, cyclopes. Uh, and some of these things can be frozen myocids, uh, but you really have to feed them a couple times, several times a day because these animals don't have stomachs. They really want to, they, it's their gestation cycle or their, uh, their gut transit time is, is, very, is very minimal. So they, they, produce, they produce it rather quickly. Wow, so no stomachs, huh? No stomachs on these guys. That's interesting. So, what do they eat? 
These guys are eating uh, artemia, uh, which are basically the hatch brine, and uh, but very uh, very young hatch brine. So hatch brine is kind of like a shrimp, right? It's a very minute shrimp. Do we have any here? Uh, we actually do. This is uh, this is right now. This is the artemia, and this is uh, the beginning stages of of uh, hatched brine. So it's it's a very microscopic uh, material. And uh, and that's what we're we're feeding these guys. So what is so this must be hatch brine as well, right? That's hatch brine, but this is the adult stage of hatch brine. That's pretty cool. So you can actually so, see them more prevalently swimming around, huh? Yeah. Now these guys would be too big uh, for the juvenile seahorses. Awesome. Well, thank you. This is really uh, great to learn more about seahorses, and uh, we look forward to another episode of Fish Guy TV next week. These guys are brand new. They basically were, were um, 